I mean, I'm taking it seriously, you guys. I, I see the government buying radiation pills, and I see yeah. the president say that. Maybe he said something he was not supposed to say. Quite possibly. Let's bring in former Assistant Treasury Secretary Monica Crowley to help us unpack this. Monica, great to see you. Great to be great here. Great to have you on the set. couch with us. Love, Love seeing you guys. Here. Thanks. So can you translate everything you just heard? <laughs> I, I think that might be above my pay grade to try to translate Joe Biden. Look, we might see a mushroom cloud, but hey, no more mean tweets, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, look, it, presidents always try to work hard to de-escalate the rhetoric when it comes to issues of war and peace and, and life and death. This president does not do that. And the result is it's exceedingly dangerous for the free world and in particular the American people because it creates enough confusion that could could actually spark an international conflict. So that's the big difference between confusion and keeping your enemies off track, right? Right. President uh, Trump would be unpredictable, but that's not necessarily confusing. There's a difference between strategic ambiguity, which is you do want to keep your enemies a little bit off balance. But the problem with this president is he is always off balance, yeah. right? He is a confused mess all the time. And it's one thing if his rhetoric is confused, say, on tax or environmental policy here at yes. home. It's another thing entirely when his rhetoric and he's wandering off the Reservation on issues of war and peace and life and death for the American people. That's when it puts us all in peril. Monica, I love your analysis. I love your podcast. Um, why aren't our statesmen, our more members of Congress on both sides, talking about an off ramp here, talking about helping to negotiate um, an end to this crisis? Why is the answer? Always just more money for Zelenska, ratcheting th Zelensky, more ratcheting this thing up. I don't see if there's any limit here to what they will do to obtain their objective of getting rid of Vladimir Putin. And yeah, what's, what's it worth? Literally with every other conflict, whether the United States was directly involved or not, over many decades, literally the minute hostilities begin, you have conversations about how do we get to a yes. peace, right? A negotiated peace. Do, does the United States need to be involved with armed forces? You start to have that conversation. What does the end game look like? What does the off ramp look like? You've had no, none of that. Zero. You've had no conversations about that whatsoever coming from this administration. So you need to ask then the next logical question, which is who benefits by allowing this war to continue here at home, but also in Europe, Ukraine, Russia, and so on. And it does appear that the ruling class is using Ukraine as a giant slush fund to launder billions of dollars. So mm -hmm. the Congress and the administration, they keep waving through every week. It's another billion a billion five to Ukraine. Nobody knows where the money is going. The weapons are not reaching the front lines. So obviously there's no accountability too. Congress should be demanding accountability for every penny that we're sending over there. But it does seem that the regime both here at home and abroad are benefiting financially by allowing this war to continue. And you'll recall that Dwight Eisenhower when he was leaving the presidency warned about the military industrial complex yep. because they knew they have an interest in perpetual wars. Also, politically, too, it serves the administration to have an external war going on where they can distract the American people from what they're doing here at home. So I think the number, and I looked into this this week, to your point, Monica, is somewhere north of $80 billion in the past eight to nine months that we have funneled towards Ukraine, which is more than the military budget of Russia on an annualized basis, which is more than a whole host of domestic programs that we spend here for Americans. And to your point as well, we have no idea, no accountability for the ultimate landing spot for that money and those weapons. Do you, and I hear a straddling something that I, I have, is this part of a massive strategy and plan to your point of the existence of a ruling class that remains regardless of who is president or is it a sloppy president who at times is bombastic and at times projects weakness and invites this type of um, chaos on the world stage. Well, I think it could be both. I don't think it's it's mutually exclusive. I think, look, when you have a weak commander in chief who's either weak, 
in, in actual terms or perceived as weak, and in this case with Biden, it's both, right? You have, it, it's a provocation. American weakness is a provocation. So all of the bad guys around the world are, of course, ascendant, and of course they're going to take full advantage of this window of opportunity where the, the United States is both weak and perceived as weak. They know that there's not going to be any real retaliation from this president. So of course they're taking their, their shots at advancing their own nation's interests, whether it's Vladimir Putin, whether it's Iran marching toward a nuclear weapon, whether it's China engaged in adventurism and economic warfare against us and around the world, of course they're going to use this moment. But the problem here is, you know, again, it's one thing for, for Biden and Harris to make a hash of things here at home. But when you're talking about issues of national security for the American people, we're in a whole other different situation. And America's interests and the interests of freedom around the world are really put on the back foot here. And it is going to take a long time. Time, assuming we survive this presidency, yeah. it's going to take a long time for us to rebuild the military and regain the stature that we just had just a couple of years ago under President Trump, who, by the way, in applying strength, projecting strength, and engaged in diplomacy in the Middle East around the world, actually delivered world peace. Donald Trump delivered a booming economy and world peace. I don't know what more people expect for an, Amer an American president. <laughs> the worry president. was the mushroom Thank cloud you. would come under Donald Trump instead. It's a threat under Joe Biden. Yeah. Monica, what, what do you make of the fact that there was such an instant universal global consensus among the elites? So I can see, like, the military industrial complex and that there's a lot of elites in our country that are benefiting. But this was, this was, I, I felt the propaganda pressure and how unified they were um, around this world and around, you know, sort of, you know, Zelensky is George Washington and it was like you were pro Putin if you had any questions in the, in the beginning. What do you make of the consensus? And you know what's so crazy about this and the irony is that the left for decades, I mean, think of Vietnam, think about the yeah. Iraq war, mm -hmm. right? They were in the streets, the, the counterculture protesting, yes. you know, make, make a love, not war, and all of this. And now the left, including their wingmen in the press, have done a full 180, and they're the ones cheering on conflict and cheering on more U.S. engagement in these conflicts around the world. It, it's completely upside down, but again, ask who benefits. And this regime benefits in a lot of different ways, including financially and politically. Real quick, before we lose you, uh, Hunter Biden in the investigation ongoing. Yes. Uh, do you believe it's in earnest, or <laughs> is this a half measure to check the box? Well, this investigation has been going on for four years already, right? So obviously they've been slow walking this yeah. thing for a long time. They wanted to see if Joe was going to be elected president. Now he is the president. Look, I think if they decide to charge him, it's only for two reasons. One, they're going after the relatively lower level fruit on the tree, which is the gun charge and the tax uh, evasion, which I'm not downplaying that, but the much bigger crimes involve the international influence peddling, which they probably don't want to touch for obvious reasons, so they'll go for the lower level stuff. It's like the Al Capone yeah. strategy, mm -hmm. right? But there's another thing in play, which is, and this is just a theory, but it could be that the DOJ is planning to move against President Trump, and they want this as cover so that they can say, look, we're doing an unbiased application of the law. We went after Trump, but we also went after a Biden. See, we're, we're above board here. And I, I, I mean, obviously, given all the corruption that we know about the FBI and DOJ, that'll be a total farce. Wow. Hmm. Monica, great stuff. We love having you on set. We got to have you back. By the way, my takeaway, make love, not war. I think I'm turning into a hippie. Always. <laughs> always. See how things turn, Rachel. Yes, I See, know. See, everything circle. comes full circle. And I'm Thanks for both. You guys. Thank I'm you for Monica. love and war. <laughs> yeah, maybe I won't wear a bra next week. <laughs> That'll do wonders for the ratings, Rachel. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, guys. It's been great to see you. Thank you, Monica. Bye, Monica. <laughs> I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.